Our last mas'ala for this evening is Al-Khamisa wal Arba'un, the 45th uh, aspect from the aspects of Jahiliyyah. Again, apologizing for going over the time. Mu'aralatu shar'i Allahi bi qadarihi. The belief that there is a contradiction between what Allah Ta'ala had legislated and what He had willed by His qadr. Our explanation comes from Sheikh Salah al Fawzan who says, هَذِهِ الْمَسْأَلَةُ أَيْضًا تَتَعَلَّقُ بِالْقَدْرِ This issue is also related to Qadr again. لِأَنَّ هُنَاكَ مَنْ يُعَارِضُونَ شَرْعَ اللَّهِ بِقَدْرِهِ There are some people who believe that what Allah legislated, meaning what He ordered and forbid, that is in contradiction to what He has actually legislated to happen and take place. ويقولون, they say, to explain this, كَيْفَ يُقَدِّرُ اللَّهِ الْكُفْرَ وَالْإِيمَانَ ثُمَّ يَشْرَعُ لِعِبَادِهِ الشَّرَائِعَ وَالْأَوَامِرَ وَالنَّوَاهِ How can Allah legislate or make the qadr, plan, have knowledge of and execute or create or bring into existence disbelief and belief? And then He legislates for His servants all of the legislation and the orders and the prohibitions. While he has already willed that this belief is going to happen. This is their issue. مَا أَنَّهَا لَا فَائِدَةَ مِنْهَا إِذَا كَانَتَ الْأُمُورُ مَقْضِيَةً وَمُقَدَّرًا And they say, since there would be no benefit, if everything has already been decided and everything has already been planned out. This is their point of confusion. فَإِنَّ النَّاسَ يَعْتَمِدُونَ عَلَى الْقَدْرِ So people are just basically acting out the issues of qadr. Whatever has been planned to happen, it happens. The people should not be held accountable. That's their doubt. min akhtari masail al jahiliya. This is one of the most dangerous of the beliefs uh, or the uh, conf- points of confusion of the people of jahiliya. Wa kullu man salaka hadha al maslak ila yom al qiyamah. The people will continue. The people go on following after this point of confusion. Following this way, all the way to Yom Al Qiyama, Mimman Yaz Umuna Anna Baina Shar'i wal Qadri Mu'arala. Those who assume that between the legislation that Allah has legislated and the qadr that He has willed, there is some kind of contradiction between the two. Wahada Madhabun Batil. This is a, a position of falsehood. Fala mu'aradata baina shar'i wal qadri abadan. There is never any contradiction between the legislation of what Allah has ordered to be done versus what he has willed to take place ever. There is no contradiction between that. Meaning, Allah has legislated or Allah has planned and created the existence of belief, I'm sorry, uh, polytheism, disobedience and disbelief. And from his order, he prohibited the people from doing that. وَالشَّرَعَ الْإِيمَانَ وَالْإِسْتِقَامَةَ وَالصَّلَاحِ And he legislated for them that they have belief, not disbelief, istiqama, uprightness, and salah, good behavior, righteousness. وَلَا مُعَارَضَةَ بَيْنَهُمَا And there is no contradiction between these two ideas. لِأَنَّ الْعِبَادِ هُمُ الَّذِينَ يَفْعَلُونَ هَذِهِ الْأَفْعَالَ بِاخْتِيَارِهِمْ وَإِرَادَتِهِمْ وَمِشِيَتِهِمْ Because it is the servants themselves the people themselves, they are the ones who do the things that they do. They do their actions by their free will, by their own uh, uh, desires, by their own wants, and by their own free will. فَالْفِعْلُ مَنْسُوبٌ إِلَيْهِمْ They are the ones who are counted as having done the action. وَلِذَلِكَ يُعَاقَبُونَ عَلَى الْمَعَاصِي And based on that, they are accountable, they are punished for their disobedience. وَيُثَابُونَ عَلَى الطَّاعَاتِ And they are rewarded for their acts of obedience. وَإِنْ كَانَتْ مُقَدَّرَةً مِنَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ تَعَالَىٰ Even if that was already planned out by Allah, the Glorified and Most High. فَإِنَّهُمْ إِنَّمَا يُجَازَوْنَا عَلَىٰ أَفْعَالِهِمْ لَا عَلَىٰ الْقَدَرِ They are rewarded for the actions that they did by their free choice. They're not being rewarded for the qadr that Allah already planned. They're being rewarded for their choices and their actions. وَلَمَّا بَيَّنَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لِأَوْسْحَابِهِ وَقَالَ مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا وَمَقْعَدُهُ مَعْلُومٌ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَالنَّارِ When the Prophet clarified, may Allah raise his rank and grant him peace to his companions once, and he said to them, there's none of you except that his seat, his seat is known, his place is known in the paradise or in the hellfire. قَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ They said, O Messenger of Allah, أَلَا نَتَّكِلُوا عَلَى كِتَابِنَا وَنَتْرُكُ الْعَمَلِ 
shouldn't we now suffice ourselves with what's been written upon us and leave off doing anything, leave off any efforts or any work? Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his response to this reaction was, I'malu, do deeds, perform your deeds, huh? فَكُلٌّ مُيَسَّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ As what's going to happen, you'll find that every person will be, it will be made easy for him that which he's been created for. The people of paradise, my explanation, the people of paradise will find it easy and they will attain the ability to make salah, to worship Allah alone, to fulfill the orders of Allah Ta'ala. The people of the hellfire will be made to perform acts of disobedience and rejection of the orders of Allah. So work hard, do your efforts, and you'll find that everyone will be pushed towards what they've been created for. And that hadith is found in Al-Bukhari and Muslim, فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى And then Allah sent down, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى And for the one who gives and has taqwa, for the one who gives charity and has good uh, actions of piety, وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى And he believes in the good recompense after death, فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى We're going to make easy for him the easy path. وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى As for the one who's stingy and sees himself as being, as taking care of his own self. وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَى And he disbelieves in the good recompense after death. فَسَنُ يَسِيرُهُ لِلْعُسْرَى We're going to make it, we're going to push him towards the path of difficulty. That's from Surah Al-Layl that you likely know. فَالْعَبْدُ يَعْمَلُ مِنْ جَانِبِهِ الْخَيْرَى وَيَجْتَنِبُ شَرَّى So people, they do deeds from their own uh, accord, good or uh, they do good deeds and they uh, abstain from bad deeds. وَأَمَّا الْقَدْرِ فَهُوَ سِرُّ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى Qadr is the secret or the secret design of Allah for His creation. لا تبحث فيه Do not seek after its details. Don't investigate the qadr of Allah. Huh? لِأَنَّهُ لَا يَعْنِيكَ Because you have no business doing that. The qadr of Allah is how Allah has chosen to plan out and execute, to bring about the affairs, to give each its measure. All of that is the right of Allah. You have no business uh, checking after or investigating the qadr of Allah. It would never lead to any uh, good result. In summary, for today's last three points, that people with regards to the qadr break down or they, are, they can be divided into four categories of people. Al-qism al-awwal, the, fourth, the first category, man yathbut, man yuthbit al-qadr, people who affirm qadr. Wa yanfi al-shara, but the people who negate that there is any legislation, there's any free will, there's any actions and all of that. Wa hum al-jabariyya, they're the people called the jabariyya, who go overboard in affirming the qadr and they don't, believe the people have a free will. Al-Qism al-Thani man yuthbitu shara wa yanfi al-Qadr The people who uh, believe in uh, the orders and the prohibitions and that mankind has a free will to obey or disobey but they reject the Qadr meaning the plan and the knowledge of Allah of things before they happened and that everything happens by His uh, will and knowledge. Wa hum al-Qadriya These people are the Qadriya They believe in the free will, but they reject the overwhelming qadr and the over, uh, the plan, the pre-knowledge of Allah and the plan of Allah. Al-Qism al-Thalith, the third category, man yuthbit al-shara'a wal-qadr. Some people affirm both the shara and the qadr. They affirm both the free will and the legislation of, do, of, of orders and prohibitions. And they also affirm the qadr. وَيَزْعُمُ أَنَّ بَيْنَهُمَا تَنَاقُضًا But they assume there is some kind of contradiction between them. They are the people of shirk. They are the polytheists uh, of jahiliyyah. Al-Qism al-Rabi' and the fourth category of people, man yuthbitu shara'a wal-qadr, they affirm both the shara' and the qadr, meaning the free will to obey or disobey, and the qadr, the plan of Allah or the predestiny of Allah. وَيَنْفِي anhum al-tanaqud And they don't believe there's any contradiction between those two things. وَهُمْ أَهْلَ sunnati wal jamaa. And they are the people of the Sunnah and the Jama'ah, meaning the Muslims who are upon the correct understanding of Islam. هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. And if there is a correction quickly, 
to something I said in mistake today, then we will allow that to be corrected. Or if there is a question that is directly related to something that we talked about today, then we'll take it at this time. Abu Abdurrahman asks, what is meant by Qadr is the secret of Allah, and also that one should not seek after it. Some of the scholars explain the sirr of Allah, meaning the plan of Allah behind everything that's created, as something connected to the vast knowledge of Allah. And how are we, how much of the knowledge of Allah can we comprehend? How much can we grasp? Very, very little. Very, very little. We, are, we have only been given a tiny bit of knowledge from Allah Ta'ala. And Allah Ta'ala's knowledge is all-encompassing of every little thing, every leaf that falls in its place. It only falls in that place by the knowledge of Allah and the qadr of Allah. That's a leaf falling down. Every little action that happens in the creation, Allah Ta'ala planned it, knows about it, and has knowledge of it before it happened and after it happened, and willed it into existence at that time at every individual time that it happened. That's the secret of Allah, meaning the sirr, the, 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 the wisdom-based uh, plan behind everything that has happened. Naam? And also that one should not seek after it. The scholars of the past used to say, uh, and there are some hadith that I don't believe are authentic, uh, that if a person seeks after the qadr or, or, or reflects carefully about the qadr, trying to discover all about the qadr, then uh, he or he will go on a, being upon good until he does something like that. There's a hadith, ما يزار الناس على خير ما لم يتكلموا في القدر والولدان. And I believe that's authentic, and we'll try to get that hadith for you. Um, the people will go on being upon goodness so long as they don't speak about the children, the wildan, and the qadr. The children here, the, the meaning of children is uh, the place of the children in the hereafter. Uh, na'am. So do not seek after the qadr of Allah As the qadr of Allah that we've mentioned here And this ties into the next question actually The qadr of Allah is Allah's knowledge It is Allah's actions and His plans And His bringing into existence And the wisdom connected to all of that These are Allah's actions This is the qadr How much do you think you're going to understand About the details? the finest details of Allah's actions. What's our principle as Ahl sunnah as Salafiyun? How do we view the attributes of Allah? Do we think and contemplate about them and try to understand their finest details? Or do we affirm them as they have come and give them the most loftiest description when we, when we attribute them to Allah and then leave them like that and do not think and contemplate about them? That's what Ahl sunnah do.